All righty. Okay, is everybody going here? Are we live? Yes, we are, and we're recording, and everything is good. Hello, everybody. This is Alex, and this is uh, Monday, and this is our pop-up show. And uh, I've got my coffee here. I'm ready to go. I'm feeling pretty good today. Yeah. I went to the eye doctor. Not not my eye eye doctor. My eye surgeon. Uh, because I've talked to him about, number one, getting rid of these. You know how much you get rid of those? Hmm? They gave me a range. I don't know why they gave me a range. But the range was $6,000 to $8,000. Just so I could be, do that. I could do that without doing that. Hey, a lot of people are waiting today. God, this is a huge crowd. Well, let's bring them all in, okay? Uh, I'm trying not to use the earphones today, so I can just listen to it over the speakers here. And let's see how this works. Hello, Charlene. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Good. And, uh, of course, Edward Berger. That's right. Okay, turn your mic up a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. Any, um... any, any way you can. Uh, yeah, and, and hello to our old friend um, uh, Mike Chisholm up there in Canada. Hey, everybody! Nice to see y'all. Yeah, uh, Len Lafrisco, good to see <laughs> you. Uh, let me see here. I got to admit all here. Uh, let me see here. There's Marjorie Miller. My nag of a wife keeps nagging oh, me. Just go to the doctor. <laughs> go get your eye looked at because you're wiping it a lot. And then I go to the doctor and he says, do I have your permission to call your wife and tell her how it went? Because she asked that I do that. And I'm thinking, boy, is she getting Snoopy. <laughs> Hello to Vernon. And I'm here. Uh, yeah. How you doing, Vernon? <clears throat> oh, I'm doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All back from the uh, Ozarks or wherever you were uh the virginia mountains that was back in october oh really mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> yeah. no, we had no. a very we had hey, a very i'm pleasant... an old guy i'm an old guy lay off of me well we had a very pleasant <laughs> november our son came home for his birthday for the first time in several years all yeah. the way from new york and he brought his fiance with him oh so we had a very pleasant thanksgiving and birthday were you, and were you happy with the fiance oh we love her yeah she's a peach oh great mm -hmm. so he made a good choice and she's from Canada. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that that's a problem. No, she grew up in Toronto. So that's, you know, it's not like beautiful British Columbia, but, you yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. All right. I agree. At least, it, at least it's an alternative country in case Trump should win again. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a place. She's a parachute. Yeah. Yeah. Get ready for a lot of people visiting you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for it. Let's do it. Hello to Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How you doing? How you doing? And uh, of on. course, there's our old friend uh, Paula Levin, uh, who uh, right. good to see you again, Paula. And so. uh, hello to Mandy, who's obviously working hard at at her office, doing her stuff. But she calls us anyway, just so that she can be seen. And uh, uh, we will say, that's not why. Who? <laughs> what? That's not why I call in to be seen. I I try to join in some of the conversations. You like to be you known, listening. You like to like to be known that you are not leaving us behind, you know. But right. you do yeah. have work to do at the same time, and we understand that. Yeah, my work's pretty mundane, so I can do it and listen to y'all at the same time. <laughs> mundane. It's just bookkeeping, accounting. It's boring, you know. It, 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 well, isn't that the life you chose for yourself? It is. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I it's mean, good, solid work. I have a business manager, and all he ever does is crush numbers. And That's I what I'm doing. he hasn't taken a gun to his head by now. <laughs> For real. Especially looking at the state of my finances, you know. That, that's why I'm late, actually, today. I've been down there commiserating with my coworker about this time of year, because what we're, we're working on is the charity that my bosses have, mm -hmm. and it's just 
crazy time what's of year. The, what's the charity? Anything we should know about? It's a children's charity and it's called Cares for Kids and they raise a lot of money to help children in our community, different projects. You know, it's great, but it's just a lot of stuff to keep up with. Good. Great. Pretty shirt, man. They love it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So how's everybody doing? Good. Yeah. Where's Charlie? Well, Charlie's trying to get in here. He'll probably be here in a second. I think there it's going to be any second now. Come on, Charlie. Where's your camera? Huh? Hmm. Huh. He may be we'll having. Continue. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what? I I just hey, found out. Where's right? Charlie? I just found out today, and of course. Oh, hi, Charlie. Uh, uh, what I found out today uh, and that I just have to buy, I have to buy myself a new Apple TV because the latest version does Zoom. And Marjorie can sit there during the show and just watch it on the big screen. <laughs> and the only thing well, she has to use is her, her camera from her phone uh, to be the camera that sees her. I find that ter terrifying to think that we'd all be like six feet across. I mean, that's kind of scary. <laughs> well, it, it's not as scary as you think. I mean, it would just be, I don't know. I just want it. Okay. Be my guest. Yeah. Yeah. Because I tried to put install the thing today and it said, sorry, it won't work with this version of Apple TV. And mine's only like a year old. So they, they obsolete this thing stuff really early. I can't talk today. I have this thing where drool comes out of the front of my mouth, and I have no idea why. <laughs> but, but, but you were going to say, Len, why? I said, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Old people talk. Yeah. <laughs> So first of all, we have to ask Mike, how's everything up in Canada? Is it still there? Canada is still here. Um, I've had a couple clients today, and they're bringing me baking. So I'm excited about that. Wait, 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 I forget again. What is it exactly you do? Um, <laughs> until I can become a professional, uh, bona fide, full-time podcast host, I'm a financial planner. You're a financial planner. Yep. Life insurance, investments, all that good stuff. And are you good at it? I mean, if I if I, I got a ton of money and yeah. I said, here, Mike, take care of it. OK, uh, yeah, yeah, I can I can I can create options, a lot of options and things like that. Oh, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Oh, of course, or if his business manager dies. But or would I come back to you, say, two months from now and you say, sorry, there's no money left. Yeah, that's uh, that's never. I'm pretty conservative when it comes to this stuff. Now, so that's, in, never, in, that's never happened in my career. In money planning, would you then figure out how much I should spend on certain stocks and things like that? I ha there are fund managers that we would work with that have certain mandates. Wait a minute. I, all of a sudden, I'm getting the feeling that <laughs> a lot of different people are going to be getting a lot of different money out of me. I mean, I think. For someone like you and where you're at in life, you could have a pretty simple plan. Oh, really? What does that mean? Um, you, I mean you know, you're going to die any day, you old man. So we don't <laughs> have to do that planning. It means leave everything to Marjorie. That's that's <laughs> it's Mar how that's right. Marjorie's going to be the go, one that will me the more complexly. But how do I know Marjorie isn't going to go before me? Well, then leave everything to us. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, you you already said well, the night the show thing. gets here, to divide it. Here, here's the thing. Uh, but are you going to be bringing me shortbread cookies, Alex? That's the only thing I want to know. Oh, okay, all right. But I mean, I, I, Marjorie, uh, she could go before me, but I hope she doesn't. Enough with this conversation. Well, because if I if I die before, uh, if she dies before me, Alex, I don't know anybody anymore. I don't have anybody. I could rot, die in this apartment, be rotting for two months, and nobody would know. Except us. We would know. We would know. You guys, We'd be here Monday. Yeah, we find out on Monday. You guys would go we'll over. Send, the, you, you we'll guys send would Tony. go over. His equipment broke. You know. Oh, uh, we sent Tony over to, to do a welfare check. Yeah, I like that. We'll send Tony. <laughs> send Tony over to do a welfare check. <laughs> 
Yeah, we went up there and there's something smelling in there. We don't know what it is. <laughs> That's why I don't want a cat. I don't want to have a cat. Because you know what a cat's going to do for food. Oh, yeah. Eat you. Yeah. 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 Goes for the eyes food. first. Yep. If you're a cat, what do you go for first? I mean, the they eyes. go for the eyes first, is from, from what I've heard. You They go for the eyes? Jesus. They really <laughs> like the eyes, cats? That's where they go first, anyway. Uh, is that why my cat always used to stare at my eyes? <laughs> Soft tissue. Maybe we should talk about politics instead. There we go. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about George Santos. Yeah. Yeah. George Santos. What's the talk about with George Santos? Well, well for one thing, his district his district was one that was re it was re uh it was reapportioned after the 2010 census and so our 2020 census and therefore it took a district that was leaning Democratic and made it lean a little more Republican. Oh, okay. I feel bad for, I, I know two people whose last name is Santos. And I, <laughs> I feel bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad association. Apparently he's throwing a bunch of people under the bus. It's like scorched oh. earth. He's going out with a bang. He's like, uh, <laughs> you're going to start naming names about who's corrupt and things like that right exactly well, you know even, something even i don't know someone. yeah but i don't know if that's a big deal because no, all right. i can say is we get, suddenly all i can get, say is get in line we suddenly got balloons because <laughs> if you do that <laughs> yeah the okay. balloons come up right i don't know let me do it again oh yeah hey marjorie, hey. Hey, marjorie. marjorie. yeah yeah. I didn't hey. <laughs> well, what could he say about uh, Congress that we don't already know? Uh, right. Let's see, try oh. going like this. <clears throat> I'm mine, but try doing that. But it, oh, no, it doesn't come up. That's funny. But when you do the other thing, it does come up. Hmm. Does yeah, it only do? You know, that's another thing they've got. I, is it a, a Zoom or a Facebook that does that? I think it's Zoom. Uh, and you go, geez, you know, it's just another annoying thing I have to figure out because it started happening. See, that started happening. What you do that again, Mark? It's not Zoom, it's Apple. Oh, just stop it. <laughs> so, I started doing it on my, on my machine and I couldn't figure out why. And then I looked it up and I found out. But they don't tell you ahead of time. Hey, we just set up the thing where you can get balloons by going like that. You know, where is it? I forget. Where, where is it? I, I well on a map. I know. I mean, it's uh, more than a gesture. It's it's someplace on my screen, and I don't know where it is. Let's go oh, like this, Paula. Yeah. My mine's not working. <laughs> <laughs> gestures, no, just gestures, like a quote, like a quote. Well, the gestures is in uh, in Zoom, and you can go like I I can do it automatically. I can do it by, uh, you see, I can do it, but I have to click on something here to do it. Oh, that's I'm my question. You, what do you have to click on? Look how much I love you, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. Um, uh, let me see here. Sunlight. What's that? Ooh. ooh, ooh. Do you see these weird things? I, I can't. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's a little cold in this apartment right now. <laughs> anyway, these are our, our, our these are new ways for you to just have so much fun. You know. So imagine if your your job is to huh? create these things every day. Yeah. Well, let me turn that That'd off. That'd be crazy. So it doesn't happen automatically. So anyway, um, um, you know, I mean, I don't know what there is to talk about because we don't talk politics on this show in case you just tune in, folks. And it's not that we don't talk about politics. Occasionally we'll mention it like Vernon just mentioned Santos, you know, um, and there are things there are things to talk about. How you doing, Brian? But what? So so we. So when we talk about pictures, I see that I see the ad for there's a new phone. I don't know what phone that is, but the phone that you take a picture and like the guy's head was faced the other way, and then the camera will correct it. Yeah, that's the Google one. I saw Google that. Pixel yeah. eight. Pixel Google. eight. 
What is it? Wait a minute. What does it do? I don't get that. You can replace the actual picture of somebody with a better picture. Oh, okay. That's AI does that, right? Mm. Why would you want to do that? So, so like they had like a. Who's who's talking? Yeah, he, Brian's he's breaking up. up. He's breaking up, Brian. Brian, you're breaking up. Yeah. Let me put on my earphones, and I can hear everything people are saying. It yeah. started with the moon phone. Like when you use the Google camera to take a picture of the moon. Yeah. People right. are like, "Oh my goodness, they did such a good job with the with the with the new camera." Well, no, they don't. It recognizes that it's the moon, and then it uses information from the internet to make the picture look better. And um, mm -hmm. they've basically taken that and they've gone to the next level with this new editing. You turn a picture, you can remove backgrounds, you can do, remove people in the background, you can do all sorts of yeah. stuff. They basically made it that you can create a new moment that did not exist out of a moment that did exist. And the value of this is what? Well, if somebody yeah. blinks just as you take the picture, you don't want right. the eyes closed on the picture, so you can't get a picture with their eyes open. Well, that's a smart that's a minor tweak, okay. But if you can change who's in the picture with you, Ken. I have two. Really? Hmm. I'll bet already you've tried that, right, uh, 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 Mike? Have you tried that? I'm an Apple guy, so uh, but I have friends who swear by it. They love it. Yeah. But if you could take a picture of yourself with somebody and then change that person, who would you change that person into? Well, David Letterman, of course. Of course. That's what I knew you <laughs> were going to say that. That's you setting the volleyball, and that's me spiking it. Oh, speaking of which, by the way, the <laughs> podcast this friday episode 100 comes out uh, -huh. uh a compilation made by the great don giller that's what episode 100 101 2 3 and 4 are he made a four-part compilation of the letterman podcast so i'm gonna give don a shout out right now thanking him for that oh okay and, uh, yeah. very he has, excited for yeah it's great stuff he said he's gonna do something with my shows but i've yet to see it you know so. mm -hmm. he said he just never started it yet probably because there's nothing to do use really <laughs> Yeah, and every episode when Checky was on here, I found there was something to do with Letterman that would come out. There was always on this show, like uh, I, I, I was fascinated by it. I'm certain that if Don goes back and looks at all the shows with Rick, he'll yeah. find something in every episode. Yeah, yeah. Well, what Rick, Rick, was, Rick was what? So I was going to say, what did you do to celebrate Checky's birthday? Well, I didn't do anything. Oh, oh, you said you celebrated online. <laughs> well, no, everybody was, a couple of people were putting up, you know, today was Jackie's birthday. Like I forgot, you yeah. know, I just didn't make a deal out of it. You know, uh, I think I'd probably make more of a deal on the day he died. And when it's mm -hmm. a one year anniversary of that. Just say it because it was his birthday and it made me think of him. Yeah, well, it too. comes up. It comes up on all my computers. Happy birthday, Shecky! So I remember to to do something about it. And you know what it is? Here's the thing. How many people? Of course, all of us know somebody who's dead, right? We well, we don't know them anymore, but we we know them, okay? And how many of you, when somebody dies who's a good friend of yours, immediately remove them from your phone book? I must have 10 no. people in there easy. I don't. I still have my friend Steve Gruberg in there. It's somehow you can't, like, I won't remove Shecky's birthday from my reminders no. for that reason. And you shouldn't. You yeah. should. No. No. You know, and also on, I, 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 at one point, I put Shecky on a couple of my um, uh, things that I subscribe to, like, uh, one of them's Disney, and the other one I can't remember what the other one was. And I put him on there because he would he put me on some of his, and I put him on some of mine. And then between us, we could have all the stuff that's out there, right? He put me on like the Criterion Collection things like that. And he's up there, and I I can't remove him. I just refuse to remove him. He Even might be watching it. You don't know. <laughs> Well, you know, I do invite him to watch with me mm -hmm. a show that he likes. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, like they just brought out a whole well, new Doctor Who's. Uh, and he would have, in fact, I didn't know what was happening. I went to Disney, had been there for like three or four days. And I said to myself, that was a true value of Shecky. If he were still alive, I would have known this was on the first day. I would have known it was on a week before it was on. You know, uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, he's he's uh, but he's on uh, on the Disney thing. So if he wants to watch it, it's there for him to watch. You know, I'll never remove people like that either, because it's it's um, it's a it's it's a great reason to keep somebody alive is is, is that like That's I text a great memory. It's a great memory. Yeah. Shecky was born the same day. Richard Pryor, two Richards born on the same day. And I messaged you, Alex. It's like you know today i you know miss both these guys and and just that little moment happens because of that reminder and i think that's yeah. important that's to keep them alive yeah but one of these days i'm going to hear from disney who says you can't have this person on there because they don't live in your house <laughs> then i'm going to have a big uh i'm going to have a a decision to make there it's either disney or shecky <laughs> and the answer would be logically that it would be shecky and here's the reason why because if it's Disney, I'm still getting rid of Shecky. See, so um, it's it's, uh, but it it really it, it's a strange thing that happens. And I have I have a couple of names in my book that are I think I think maybe Bruce David is still in there, Marjorie, and I never removed him, you know. But uh, it, it, it you know, so it was his birthday. And uh, I knew it was his birthday. And then everybody's writing me like, I should have known it. You should have known it was his birthday. And I went, I, and I know it was his birthday. When I wrote, I'm, I, 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 I celebrated. Yeah, I did in here, you know. Well, here, wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. Uh, uh, in there. And, uh, um, you know, so I was doing it. It's just, I wasn't making a big deal out of it. And I don't consider facebook to be the end all of pieces of communication with other people so anyway um so uh, uh let me see. you know a trouble is i had a couple of other i had another person die this year uh just recently and i'm getting sick of this you know this wasn't a person that was close to me but he'd worked with me over at midnight blue he's one of my people a very close person so now that I checked, I think there are four people from the Midnight Blue crew, which wasn't that large, were all dead. Yeah. I tried to look up your Midnight Blue series, but they want to charge for it on Prime. On Prime? What, on Amazon Prime? Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, you mean those that the guy is selling, the DVDs, you mean? No, this is streaming. What? <clears throat> There's so much per episode. So much per episode. How much of that are you seeing, Alex? Really? Well, I'm not seeing anything, but huh. the, but but I do. Uh, according to this guy, I who I know who the guy is who bought all the tapes and everything. I have the rights <clears throat> to use any of them for my own purposes, if I want to. Uh, he may not remember hey. that, but the reason is is that I informed him. I went to him. He started distributing these things. And I said to him, I said, uh, do you have a release on me? He said, no. Hmm. I said, oh, see, because you know why you don't have a release on me? He says, why? He said, because I never signed one. Hmm. I was smart enough back then not to sign any releases for this material that I was on. And I'm on a lot of that stuff. You should start streaming it on GabNet. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to stream it through YouTube, and there's too much nudity and stuff like that that YouTube wouldn't let me do it. So, so do it on GabNet. No, GabNet doesn't have a video streaming. All, all we, what we we do, yeah. I could put it on GabNet. You're right. But then again, I, GoDaddy will probably come after me and say, we don't, we don't let porn. I think they don't let porn go out over GoDaddy. Unless I got myself my own uh, server and everything like that, that would be the only way that I could do it, you know. Uh, but anyway, I told the guy, I said, and by the way, you don't have a release on anybody because uh, we, uh, the, the 
the releases were lost towards the end of Al Goldstein's stay there. So you don't have any releases on the on the on the models that were used in the show or the people that were on the show. I said, so unless you want me to tell everybody, uh, you better let me have the rights to this if I want to use. How long ago was that? What that he's that we made this deal? Yeah. Uh, this was uh, maybe 10 years ago, something like that. So streaming uh, wasn't nearly as uh, no, no prolific as it is now. And the, and the problem is, is that I said to him, send me a letter to that effect. And he never did. Mm. Uh, and, but at any, point, at any point, if I want to sue him, I, I probably can sue him uh, because he has no release on me. And you have to have a release on people. I mean, every time we did a shoot, Sign the release, you know. Uh, so, anyway, so oh, got a question. Can, I, oh, can, I ask, can I ask what that show was? Midnight Blue. Oh, wow. uh huh. Because I don't know. Oh, that was Paula. That's the thing I've done in my career that of which I'm the most proud. I know that sounds ridiculous because you never heard of it. It was a show. I won't say it was a sex show. It was a show about sex. And we cover, I called it the sexual version of 60 Minutes, in which huh. we covered the whole breadth and width of the sexual movements and so on and so forth. And this was at a time when you had things like... I assume, I assume you mean the sexual revolution rather than sexual movements. Is that right? Well, there were sexual movements. <laughs> they had nudity on it and everything, yeah. Yeah, we had nudity and everything. It, it, the thing was, is that this was a time when... Gays started organizing, you know, and women started talking about women's liberation. And so all these things, it, it was a, I, as I described it, it was a period of time where this the the uh, politics of the day were sexual in one in one way or another. And there were also people who just sexual freedom, you know, this, that, and the other thing. So we we covered it all, you know, and uh I was very proud of that program. Yeah. So anyway. But by sexual movements, though, you meant like left to right, right? <laughs> up and down. It had nothing to do with up and down. down. Up and down. Yeah. yeah. Up and down. Circular, semicircular, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, moaning and boning. I <laughs> <That's what laughs> <we used to. laughs> Uh, but no, we had, you know, we had a thing called, we the best segment I think we had was called Speak Your Peace. And uh, it was people who would ask a sexual question of the week. And then all these people, we'd bring in, bring in a ton of people, like 20 people. And we'd all sit them down and ask them like about five questions. And then we could spread those out over five weeks. And then we would shop the best answers together. we say, this week, the question is, you know, what was the weirdest place you ever had sex? And then we would have all these people answering that question. That sounds like a lot of fun. And that went on for about 15 minutes. It was, I love that part of the show. And it was the easiest part of the show to do. Once a month, we would hold a party. We'd invite people in. We'd have snacks and everything like that. And then we'd start interviewing them one by one. And uh, it was, um, we got some great answers too. And we got were they, some, were they famous people or just uh yeah you know. no no yeah. and they were they were all there were also some people there who in and of themselves were very funny you know and and could o always be expected to be the last one we'd put up because the the answer was just so hilarious and then we had a thing called the uh uh the uh uh what do you call it? video center fold in which we had some woman in nude or whatever in some kind of situation i had one posing and playing with a pinball machine as an example another one with a woman lying there uh with a bunch of dolls hundreds of dolls around her you know it was I, that was my piece of art okay but i love that show i love what i did on it and people come to me and they go Hey, I know you. You used to do Midnight Blue. Like they just found out something about me. They could maybe release to the press or something like that. And they go, Yeah, absolutely. It was the thing I'm most proud of. And it just takes the 
the wheels off the carriage. You know, they don't have anything to. They think it was a, it was a different time. It was a different time. Yeah, yeah. You was it on Showtime though? Like, what, or what? What, who distributed it? What what network was it on? Oh no, it was on cable here in New York. It right, was, right, right. It was, it was on cable. public access, which then became became paid access. And, and that's how you got away with the language and the nudity and all that. Once it was yeah, paid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we did have certain restrictions because uh you had a cable company who who laid down a few ground rules. See, it was in there because there was a uh, a, a thing that was added when they when they signed to get the franchise in the city of New York that said okay. they had to give three channels over to what was called public access. And they had to give That's people true. time on that public access uh, with no discriminatory factors involved. <laughs> and unless it broke some kind of law, they had to allow anybody to do anything without censoring it. And so we decided, well, that that that's a that's a good way to come on, uh, to do something. And we and Al Goldstein originally started a thing called the Screw Magazine of the Air. Mm. One day, I'm at the bank and I bump into this guy named Bruce David, who was the producer of it. And uh, I, Bruce said, "Have you seen the, the Screw Magazine of the Air?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "What do you think of it?" I said, "Well, it's you're doing it all wrong." I said, you shouldn't be sitting in a studio interviewing people. You should be going out and taking people to these things that are happening and be the reporter of those things. And so we did that. And he said, would you help me with it? I said, yeah, I've got equipment that we can use to go out on remotes and stuff because I have portable cameras and an editing machine and all of that. And we did about two episodes as a screw magazine of the air. And then one day... The cable company said, you can't use the name Screw. I said, why? And they said, because it's the name of a commercial product. You're not supposed to be promoting commercial stuff. What product? The product was Screw Magazine. <laughs> right? Yeah, it'd be like calling it Swank or Penthouse or Playboy or whatever. They uh, yeah, that's great. Swank play, you know, <laughs> magazine of the year. So uh, he and I sat around that week trying to think of a new name for the uh, for the show and <laughs> we it came up with it because um there was a movie a show in canada called the baby blue movie and i went blue it's going on at midnight and so we came out with midnight blue the great, and, and it's Melissa a great manchester title. stole it from us and wrote a song so you know <laughs> that's uh, right but but uh, and and that's how it came about, you know. So that was our our oh, and and I wound up going down and speaking before Congress and things like that. It was a real adventure. You a did adventure, yeah, yeah. I, well, I didn't you have that's when talk about Santos. Didn't you experience back then a congressman showing the two faces of 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 what the office is versus the person? Wasn't there a congressman well, well, love what your happened was uh, I'm trying to remember who was the uh, Senate, uh, the congressman, uh, uh, congressman, uh, the, 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 his name was on the committee. I'm trying to remember now. It's on the tip of my tongue. Started with a D, uh, and uh, he was a congressman, and he held this hearing, and it was about sex on TV in New York City on the cable, and blah blah blah, and it was it was called Midnight Blue Day in Congress. <laughs> and uh, we, we went and I went in front of this whole committee. They were all sitting up there. Right. Uh, and um, the head of the committee. So, so then I made my case for what we were doing and how much we loved doing it. And that it was where we didn't have a cause here. We, we, it was a thing that we just loved doing. And um, I said, why not, why don't you come down to the, another room where we had a projector set up and all of that. And we'll show you some scenes from Midnight Blue. So we take them all down there. And, and one of the things we showed them was a male uh, burlesque house. <laughs> These guys would get up and be nude and they're dancing around with their penises bobbing up and down to the song Baby Face. <laughs> and really, if you think about it, there's nothing sexy about that. But there's a lot that's silly about it. Yeah. Okay. 
Was that the time, Alex, was that the time that, that, that the Supreme Court said about pornography? I don't know what, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. I, somebody seven in the words. government said that. Yeah. George Carlin, seven words. It, well, anyway. But, so, that's, but, but this was the Supreme, this is from the Supreme yeah. Court. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. So I, we, show, we show him this thing. And as I'm walking back, the head of the committee, what was his name? D something. Uh, oh, my mind is going. Anyway. We were walking back from the room and he sidles up next to me and he said, I got to tell you, stuff you just showed us was hilarious. <laughs> and by the way, very well done. Yeah, off the record. And I'm thinking to myself, we got it made here, right? We go back into the, into the hearing room. They all get back up on the podium and the head of the committee says, that's some of the most disgusting stuff. <laughs> of course. And I went, wow, I just got my lesson in Washington. Yeah, that's right. You know, this went before the Supreme Court and and it was ruled in favor of Goldstein in 2000. Well, that was another case. That was well, the that was the that. OK, you're going to love this one. people. <laughs> that was the case in which he was um, arrested in Topeka, Kansas, I think it was. I'm not sure if that was the city, but I think it was Topeka uh, for obscenity because they had somebody had sent Screw Magazine through the mail to a subscriber in Topeka, a subscriber who incidentally was trying to set up Screw Magazine. And uh, he went to court and he fought that and the Supreme Court voted on his side that he had this the right... Huh? This, is a, this is a different case. In 1995, it was part of a lawsuit bought by Time Warner Cable because somebody said they had to uh, scramble sexually explicit public access programs unless the subscriber gave written consent. Yes, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, wasn't, that wasn't part of our thing at all. That was, that that was part late. of Midnight Blue. Huh? It was part of Midnight Blue in 1995. Did it say Midnight Blue? Yep. Well, in what year? 1995. I was out of there by 95. Yeah, I was out of there by 95. I I came, I, I went to California and moved to California in 1980. And this whole thing that we had in Washington, D.C. took place about 1977, I think. That sounds about right. Yeah, I have the, I have the actual, in, in storage, I have the actual congressional hearing book where they print all the hearings every day in congress and uh i have my my testimony but it was 19 in 1970 maybe 1977 i'd say somewhere around there but wasn't it abe fortis that said i don't know what obscenity i think that, that is but i know it when i, I see it yeah, yeah i think so but anyway so uh, but we had nothing to do with the supreme court this all had to do with congress and this hearing they were holding on obscenity on television and cable and blah 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 and they had the head of the cable company get up and talk and so on and so forth but i uh you know it was just a real lesson for me and it also you know there was something about it that felt very movie like to me you know that the little guy gets to go and sit before these guys and i figured finally i've got at least i've got congress listening to me you know and they can't go anywhere they can't go anywhere they got to sit there and listen to so now we live in an age where children are watching pornography on. Oh what? yeah, okay, yeah, right, yeah. I mean, uh, but I never knew a certain any child that was ever hurt by pornography. In fact, I, I'll tell you a great story. There was a a, a group here in New York called the um, uh, the what was the theater? Oh God, I'm I'm so out of it now these days. I can't remember these things. But they had a, a theater group, very famous theater group. And it was uh, uh, Julian Beck and Judith Molina. Uh, Julian Beck was in the Pro Poltergeist movies. Uh, and uh, uh, Judith Molina played, uh, well, I can't remember who, Grandma or something in the Adams Family movies. And uh, they had this very avant-garde theater. And I went to some kind of, there was some kind of thing over at uh, the college here in New York. And uh, 
they they what was it? What were they going to show? I can't remember what they were showing, but they in the middle of all of this, they showed some porn because I think it was a discussion on pornography, and they showed some porn. And Judith and Julian's little kid, who was three years old, was there, four years old, maybe, sitting in the audience. How do you think the kid was affected by this? Mm -hmm. The kid looked at Judith and said, Mom, I'm going out into the lobby. This is boring. <laughs> that showed me that little kids are not going to be hurt by pornography. They got better things to do, you know? And and so I um, I always was bothered by that kind of argument. Think about the children. No, you want us to think about you. You don't want to see it, you know. And uh, but it was a great adventure. I just of all the things I've done, uh, you know, that was that was my biggest adventure. Everything else was fun, and it was a landmark in my life. And you know, I was happy with the show I did in San Francisco, for instance. You know. Uh, but nothing was adventurous and is out there as doing Midnight Blue. So I rest my case, Judge. It was a real, it's like a real live Wayne's World, huh? <laughs> it was. It wasn't. No, Wayne's World was more like a podcast. Yeah, but it was on a cable access band. Yeah, yeah, but this wasn't. This was. This was far more sophisticated in its production values and everything. I think what I looked up must not have been it because this looked like a cartoon. What what they were showing that said you could you could rent or buy was was like a cartoon. What they called mean, it? Well, Midnight Blue. There are uh, com compilations of Midnight Blue this guy has put out that are being sold on Amazon. Okay, so but they but they're. From what you just described, though, that show was not cartoon. It was real live, live people. We never had any cartoons, no. Okay. No. And and maybe somebody had a good case. It would have a good case if they were cartoons because they would say kids might mistake them for, you know, kid shows or whatever. But anyway, that was that's my, that's my story. Anybody else have a story in their life that's exciting? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, back to what uh, you guys were talking about on Friday night about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. Okay. It was it was during the last year of Obama's last term that Scalia died, and if she yeah. had resigned during that time, you'd have faced the same problem that Obama faced trying to replace Scalia. Yeah. Uh, Mitch McConnell was in charge of the Senate at the time, and he would not have approved anybody to replace her. Right. Do you think that maybe o Obama could have fought that and really, uh, well, he didn't have the uh, Congress on his side, did he, at that time? It's only the Senate. You only have to get okay. confirmation from the Senate. The Senate, maybe. yeah. But there wasn't a majority in the Senate. Correct. Mitch McConnell had the majority in the Senate. Now, at that time, we had uh, the Democrats had the majority in the House of Representatives, but that doesn't mean anything. No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, in any event, uh, if, if somehow he could have replaced her, it would have not been bad. But you know, I mean, it's it. it, 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 it I just uh, I, I think what I was talking about was that Ruth Bader Ginsburg, when asked by um, Obama to resign because mm -hmm. she was ill, she already had pancreatic cancer or whatever, um, wouldn't do it. And he wanted to do it so he could maybe try and put somebody in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe he would have fought harder against McConnell. Who I don't knows? know. McConnell was a was was a, a bane of Obama's existence during his entire eight years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's why Merritt. That's why Merritt Garland uh, it was never uh, um, was that's never right. before that's the right. Senate. Well, he was he was presented as the nominee, and uh, nothing was allowed to happen about it. But here we go talking politics. It's just past politics. What? Well, uh, did I tell you? Did I tell you what? It the, is history. What the, did I tell you what Kentucky's legislature has done? Because Mitch McConnell is not got a, themselves not a, in the foot. No, no, no. He, he, <laughs> Mitch McConnell is not in great health, so there has been talk about him stepping down or dying or whatever. The the uh, Republicans control mm -hmm. both the House and the Senate in the state legislature in Kentucky. So they passed a law 
that said if Mitch McConnell had to be replaced before the end of his term, that our Democratic governor would have to appoint someone from the Republican Party to replace Mitch McConnell. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like a, a law that, that would that a legal law. It, it, it is our 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 governor Andy Bashir, who was reelected overwhelmingly during last year, said that he would not follow that law because it was unconstitutional by the state law as well as the seventeenth amendment of the Constitution. Yeah. Absolutely. And we've just can no longer call this show non political. Mm. <laughs> Well, at least it doesn't get you demonetized. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear a good? You want to hear a good sex toy joke? A good sex toy <laughs> joke? Okay. Yeah. Not only, not only, not only. Uh, well, we'll be demonetized for I'll this. Ple- oh, I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up. <laughs> okay. I was at a I was at a scheduling meeting for Habitat, and somebody came in and asked the director of construction. Uh, what would get you fired around here? And she says, excuse me? He says, no, what would get you fired? What what would you could you do that would get you fired? Because you know it's a it's a Christian nonprofit organization. And she said, well, the embezzlement would probably be one thing. The other thing is probably sitting around at your desk all day and not doing anything. And then some of the other project managers just started laughing out loud and they said, what about big red? And she says, oh, then she started laughing, too. And everything settled down. Big Red was apparently a guy that had been working there part time. And he had he placed an order on Amazon and had it delivered to the shop. Okay, well, it came in. Nobody knew what it was or anything or who it was for, whatever. Well, they probably shouldn't have, but they opened it. (laughs) And it was a sex toy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and so they taped it back up and they put it over with his stuff and when he came in and got it he started telling everybody in the whole place that he had gotten this thing he got fired the next day really <laughs> yeah. well i guess that's something that could get you fired and then one of the other managers i'll i'll leave it to your imagination okay one of the other project managers says that's not what we meant about personal growth so brian we 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 found uh we found a we found something like that in a conference room from a night shift in one of our buildings one time and hr had to come to me and and describe what they found and what they saw and a picture of it because they legally had to start asking questions and find out and uh that was pretty funny companies go crazy don't they with stuff like that night shift night shift geez we had to we had to take all of the blinds off of the conference rooms because night shift would like start going in into these rooms and we didn't know what the heck was going on and I wasn't invited, so that's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> I really got mad about that. Yeah. Where where are you right now in your are you going home? I'm in San Jose, California. I'm no, I'm at Adrian's school picking her up today. I was in Lodi this morning, so uh yes, yeah, so I'm here to pick her up at two, two o'clock. Did you drive by and see my 49ers flag out front or no? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't hear you. I'm breaking up. I'm breaking up. I'm hard yeah, to hear. I know this much. The 49ers won yesterday, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yes, sir. How did I know that? I was watching 60 minutes and 49ers came up and they were on top. <laughs> can't even tell you what the score was. Oh, I killed him. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> I can't hear anything. I'm losing signal. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. Something's wait a minute. happening. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian, you're from the Bay Area. Yes. Aren't you supposed to yes. be for the 49ers? I wa- I used to be a 49er fan, but I was also an Eagles fan, and then I departed from the 49ers. I didn't I used know. to see Jerry know. Rice and all those guys. I didn't, know. I didn't know that the 49ers played rock groups. Huh? Oh, yeah. oh, uh, oh. They, they probably would have done better. They probably would have done better. The Eagles, no. if they were for a rock group. You know, these, these days, no matter where you live, you know, my wife's yeah, a we know. fan, 
you know, people are fans. I have a friend that lived in New York. He's a Cowboys fan. It's yeah. it, it's internet. It's a national. Feels right for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next week, the Jets. Yeah, my. Yeah. Oh, I grew up a Forty Nine er fan, and and I was watching both of them. And I mean, I used to in Redwood City, Red Morton Park down in Redwood City is where they used to uh, work out. Mm -hmm. And we used to see him drive around, and uh, we'd bump into him all the time in Redwood City. But then I was watching the Eagles also, and I just started watching the Eagles more. So, really, it's all good. It's all good. Well, this weekend the Jets are playing Steely Dan, so it's. Uh... No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess you know it's just my little attempt at uh, sports humor. <laughs> yeah, you might want to stick to play. Yeah, now I, yeah. and now I got Charlie teaming up on me this weekend. Jeez, man, he's got to yeah. leave me alone. Well, Charlie, Let's see what happens? Wait a minute, Char. What's the game that the two of you are going to hate each other for? The Eagles, the Eagles and Cowboys, Cowboys play Cowboys. Sunday night. Really? Yeah, yeah. You, gotta, yeah. you gotta make the pack like we did with Charlie. Whatever. And, you, and Charlie, you are you're a Cowboys fan, right? Yeah, for over fifty years. Really. Yeah. Even before you, well, you lived in Texas. Even before I moved to Texas, yes, I was a Cowboys fan. Where were, where were you? Where did you start out? Where were you born? That's in Chicago. I was a Chicago Bears fan when I was a little How kid. How the hell did you wind up in Texas? <laughs> Astrophysics at the University of <laughs> Texas at Austin. Really? Mm. Yes. And so then you were stuck in Florida, in, in the Texas. I got to yeah. tell you something. When I moved to Texas, People want to say, what city did you move to that you had the most fun in, that you enjoyed the most, had the most friends in? You know, socially, it was just the best city for you. Alexa, stop. I have to say Houston. It was a <laughs> great town. I don't know if it still is, but it was, you know. Uh, everybody uh, get ready. Mandy's leaving. She wants her attention to say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Don't force her away. <laughs> Just for that, I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about this group. One big happy family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh <laughs> this is just this is just wonderful. I, Mandy, you took yourself off of mute. Yes. But you wanted to say something. Well, you... I was I was just, you know, taking myself off mute in case I wanted to say something. See? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't gonna, were you going to leave us? I'm leaving at five o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Don't I you have exercise change. class tonight? Yeah, I just went ahead and changed. I we had changes this month, so I have a class I'm teaching tonight. So yeah, and and uh, what time? Six thirty, but I still get thirty. You'll get there, okay, right? Yeah, I I don't care if I'm late to it. <laughs> How far away is it? It's it could take anywhere from thirty minutes to forty. It just depends on traffic. Okay, yeah. but if it's if it's six thirty and you leave at five, you got plenty of time. Well, it's because I was going to go to the one that's at five thirty, but if and then I'll teach mine after that, but. I can be late to the one I'm not teaching. Yeah. Are you good at teaching this? Are yes, people, they have. Great. Are people getting healthy? The ones that show uh -huh. up, we have, we as a really small studio. Yeah. There's, we only have like 50 members. So. What kind of exercise. Marjorie, wake up. Of uh, what, <laughs> what, what, what what kind of uh, what kind of class is it? I mean, this one is kickboxing tonight. Kickbox? Wait a minute, you kickbox? It's just oh, a lot. Of the man. Did you hear that, it's Brian? Did you hear that? I know that's why. So I'm never visiting her. <laughs> you don't want to screw around with Mandy. I know I'm really tough on this, but <laughs> now I don't want to see her in person. Gloves or anything? It's just cardio. It's just some set to music. We it's just, just do, it's just the cardio stuff, and you just the cardio. You know, pretend like you're you're basically pretending that you're fighting people. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you if you attack me, I just have to make sure there's no music on around us. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> 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 I love it. Kickboxing. I don't think I could do that now. 
I don't, I, you know, I, I just don't, I don't think I have the balance for it. I don't think I have the, uh, not the strength. I think I could kick, but I think I'd fall over doing it or something. It does <laughs> challenge your balance. So it is very good, um, which, you know, class for like balance because yeah. we do balance um, stuff. Well, it would be fine because you have mats, right? Mats all over the floor. Um, no, it's just a hard floor. <laughs> Oh, well, then I, I could kill we, myself. We have mats we can get on to do some floor stuff. Don't but... break your hip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't break your hip. I mean, yeah, I, 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 fig I figure there are all kinds of things trying to kill me. The cat we had here was trying to kill me. <laughs> like walk down the hall and the cat yeah. would be right in front of my feet and try and Always. trip. And I'm going, you're trying to kill me. You're trying to kill me. And she look up and go, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Good thing. Did I ever tell you I had a Siamese cat that did a great imitation of Edward G. Robinson? <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't yeah. have to say any more if you've ever seen a um, Siamese cat, but he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the, the cat, we have a cat. We got a cat like a year and a half ago. Yeah. And the cat videos, the cat videos on YouTube and stuff are really pretty hilarious. Some of those cats, go crazy and they knock everything over in the room and yeah. it's, it's pretty funny here's the thing that a cat likes to do more than anything else and i bet it's happening at your place if you have something up on a table like a little little flashlight or something they'll mm -hmm. start moving it towards the edge of the table and then all of a sudden it'll go over the edge of the table and they go oh what was that <laughs> why did that happen my cat never did any of those cliche th cliche things oh, like uh it didn't try to get into like vases or pots, you know, to, you know, oh, yeah. it didn't knock things off. It, it like, it wasn't an asshole. Basically. She was well, like, well, I, more than that, it wasn't a cat. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, 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 they brought over this laser, right? This laser light. And they brought over this j little jar of uh, kitty treats. And we put them up on the counter. And every time we would go into the kitchen, where were they, Marjorie? On the floor. On the floor. <laughs> but the cat is not stupid. She wanted, no. to play. she wanted to play with the laser and she wanted the treats. Yeah. Now, how you got her to come for, for this, if you couldn't find her anywhere in the house and you wanted her to come, you just take the uh, thing full of treats and shake it. Shake it. It would rattle, right? So one night I'm in the guest room and it's time for me to take my pills. So I opened up the, I, I, I put, picked up the bottle of, uh, of, uh, of pills and they rattled and the cat immediately comes wanting a pill. <laughs> I miss that cat. Don't you Marjorie? She has, you haven't said anything tonight. <laughs> Did you smoke before you came here? No. Well, that, that's why. <laughs> oh, that's why. Yeah. It's it's pretty funny because there's one other guy who's an Eagles fan here, and he's so distraught today. Uh, his wife is picking up his kid. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> really? he, he, and she's driving his truck, and I just see him, and she came out, and I'm like, "Where? He's not even driving. He's not here." Oh my! What goodness. do you get distressed for? I mean, it's only, it's only. A and then I got here. Tony and Charlie and Kevin texting me all through the game. You know, I'm gonna throw my phone out the window when the next game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I said I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Len. Len did it by himself. Yeah. Well, every every Saturday night, I get together with uh, Kevin and Josh and uh, Patrick, who are people who we know, and we just kind of get together and talk with each other. And I I usually am good for about an hour because I get tired early, and it gets to be about midnight. <laughs> it's time for me to go, and I say goodbye. And as soon as I say goodbye, they start talking about sports. <laughs> <laughs> How come? Yeah, yeah. And I course is life. Yeah. Um, but anyway, anything to report, especially important from Canada before we go, Mike. <laughs> I mean, because you know, up there we have to every now and then uh, when you're when you don't show up on this program, I worry that Canada no longer exists. 
uh, I appreciate that, and, and it, it, it it pains me every time I'm not able to come here. Uh, no, things are things are alive and things are well. Um, it's raining. There's no snow on the ground where I am. It's just uh, yeah, things are copacetic up here. But thank you. Yeah, and I'll call you. Maybe I'll have you handle my money because uh, it's either that or suicide for me. So. <laughs> Hey, my financial planner called me today and said he was leaving the brokerage that he's at, and but he's he's going off on his own. Really? He's yeah. going to convert all your money into Canadian dollars. Don't worry. <laughs> I do. You, uh, let me just ask you quickly before we go: If you're a financial planner, do you have to have a certain amount of credentials, or do you just one day? Is this kind of like being a life coach? No, I, I I have two government designations: one for insurance, one for investments. Oh, I see. Okay, well, very good. But you yeah. can only do that in Canada, right? Yeah. Um. Actually, well, you uh, would be no good. I, You'd be no good for me. I can give like you know general good stuff to ask your guy though, and, and I'm happy to do that. I do that with lots of my friends. There's lots of principles that are timeless and mm -hmm. and borderless. So. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I can say like. Uh, do you have any suggestions, Mike? And your first suggestion would be save your money. There you <laughs> go. Hey, listen, we've you've been quiet today, Charlene. Yeah, I just enjoy uh, listening to everybody. We enjoy having you here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you to our uh, good friend up in Canada, Mike Chisholm. Mm -hmm. There's a podcast called the Letterman Podcast, which is uh, 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 on, uh, where is it? Is it on YouTube? On where wherever you can find find podcasts and YouTube, YouTube I think is the best way to watch it because there's lots of visuals that come it, with it. It's also easier, yeah, than any going to some other place. Yep. Um, although I don't like to suggest YouTube because I think they suck. But you know, Spotify is also video. The Spotify version of the show is also video. Oh really? I hate. Yep. I only have the audio of my show up on Spotify. Maybe I should. Maybe I should put up the video, or maybe the video is up there. I don't know. So long ago. Yeah. I'm I'm on everything. Uh <laughs> Len Lafrisco, thank you so much for being here. Marjorie, what's for dinner? Leftovers. <laughs> what leftovers? We had leftovers last night. No, we didn't. We had Chinese food. Now they're really leftover. Now they're really leftover. <laughs> you know it's getting bad when you have leftovers from yeah, leftovers. I see Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> what what? Oh hey, look who's hey, there. Adrian. She looks different in the car than she looks in your office. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll get to her in a second. Vernon, thank you for being here. Jeff, always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Uh, um, and uh, Paula, you know, what can I say? I we, this The show would not be the show without you. It also wouldn't be the show without Mandy. It <laughs> wouldn't be the show without Charlie. Brian, not so much. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Oh, we love you, Brian. You're terrific. And why does she look? Does she keep growing every week? Getting I mean, bigger, she, yeah. She matures every week. No, yeah, that's what kids do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, she, she's not as goofy and silly as she used to be. You know, she doesn't do the hoochie coochie dance and stuff like that lately. <laughs> oh well, I talked, I talked too early. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> And finally, uh, let's close off the whole program with the immortal words of Edward Berger, who signs off by saying, That's all, folks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.